everybody. Welcome to Aurora Graphics. My name is Grant Dorsey and this week I thought we'd do a tutorial on alpha channels. Um, an alpha channel is simply a black and white image that will allow you to make a selection area based on the different color values of the, the black and white or grayscale. Uh, so essentially to get a new alpha channel you just go to the channels palette and click a new channel and you'll see it gets pops us up an alpha channel here. And when you've got this just selected, it won't show you any of the things that you've got in your layer, layers palette because those are available through the RGB uh, channels. And so when, when you've got those eyes turned off, you won't be able to see what's going on there. Um, and so alpha channels are pretty simple. You can, you can paint on them like this. And then when you control click, remember that's to load selection. If you've been paying attention to the other videos, uh, you can see that it is actually selecting the white area and not the black. So let's do something cool with it. I'm going to go ahead and open up the paint splatters file here. Um, this image is available on our website. It's, it's, there's a black and a white version. And you'll see here in a second that it doesn't really matter which one you get. And so I'm going to select all, edit copy, file close. And then I'm just going to paste it into our image here. And so you can see that the, the paint splatter, splatters are now our alpha channel. So if I turn back on our RGB and I control click the alpha channel, you can see that it actually selected all of the white area in the paint splatters. So now in our new layer that I've, I've created here, I'm just going to dump some color in it. That was control backspace to dump the, uh, the background color. And now, if we turn off all these other layers, you can see that we've got just our paint splatters with a transparent background. And uh, the cool thing about this is now you can add layer styles to it. So you can do a color overlay and, and turn it red. You could put a drop shadow on it. So now it looks like it's raised up off the vehicle. Something like that. Uh, the other thing you can do with it is get rid of the drop shadow and maybe make a really colorful gradient out of it. So, okay, that's pretty cool. If you use any black and white image, for instance, I just grabbed these paint splatters because it is black and white and it's kind of cool the, the little tricks you can do with them, but um, you can literally paste any black and white image in there. It could be a photograph, it could be anything, and then use that as an alpha channel. And so I'm going to go ahead and delete this layer and get a new design layer up here. I think I'm going to open up the steampunk gears here. And uh, control ACW to select all, edit copy, and close the file. So now I'm just going to shrink this down until it gets close to fitting the truck here. And so I'm going to come over here to our alpha channel. If we turn this back on, I'm going to use a, a blur here, a motion blur. And if you notice, I've got it set as, as high as it'll go. So I just cranked it all the way to the max. And uh, we're just going to click OK here. The, the less that you, you move this slider, the less the blur you get, obviously. And so now that we've got that taken care of, we can select our alpha channel, come back to our layers palette, and then add a layer mask to this. And so now you can see that we're actually masked off in the areas where it's it was black and white. And if we go back here and look at our alpha channel, this alpha channel has a lot of gray in it. You know, there's not, it's not pure white here and it's not pure black here. <clears throat> Turn the alpha channel back off. You can see it shows you in red. And so what we get is kind of a ghosted look there. Now that looks kind of cool. It looks a little bit like uh, brushed aluminum with some ghosted in steampunk gears. So now what we're going to do is manipulate this black and white image. And, and you'll come to find out that a lot of things in Photoshop deal with black and white to control different things. Like for instance, all the brushes are made with just a black and a white JPEG. Uh, you can make your own custom brushes up to 2,500 by 2,500 pixels wide with uh, very simple things just like this. We'll probably do that in another tutorial, but 
Uh, for now, under image adjustments, I'm going to go to my levels tool. And you'll notice here, which if you've seen my other videos, we've used this tool a lot. Um, I'm on my layer mask, not on the steampunk layer, but on the mask itself. And you can see we got this nice swoop here. This slider is going to control the white. So if you notice, the gears are starting to come through more and more and more. And if I go all the way to the right, it'll, it'll completely turn the layer mask white. You see, it's, it's absolutely white now. So it's letting the entire image through. If I, to the contrary, if I move the black slider all the way over, it'll turn our entire layer mask black and now you can't see anything. So what we're gonna do is, is just bring them close together so we start to get a really high contrast on the edge and less fade. And I think that looks pretty cool. It almost looks like the paint's wearing off and now you can start to see the, the gears coming through. <clears throat> and so if you wanted to, you could step back if you didn't really like the way that that turned out. Uh, we can go with a little bit less black and more white and you see you get lots, lots less gray in the area. Or we could move the white farther and come in with more black. And you can see how you're getting different effects there. And so this is going to be all about taste really or what kind of look you're going for. The nice thing about these layer masks, you can turn off this lock. You see, if I leave the, the lock on and I grab this layer, it doesn't matter whether you grab the mask or the layer, it's going to move everything together. So I'll just step backwards here and put it back where it was. If I unchain this, I can grab one or the other. So like right here, I can grab the gears and move them around, but the mask doesn't move. If I grab the mask, the gears won't move. See there? And the whole reason why it looks like it's gray, here I'll turn this off again. It just looks like it's gray because I have the gray truck on. You could really put any color you want in there or, or whatever it is that you're, you're looking for. So another cool thing about these layer masks is once you've got it on the vehicle, you can still manipulate it. Like you can um, even transform it. So under Edit Transform, I'll go to Warp. And if we zoom out a little here so I can see better. I'll just grab this corner and start dragging it down and uh, see if we can't follow a little bit more along the lines of, of the truck itself. Control plus will, and minus will allow you to zoom in and out while you're transforming. And so we can just warp some of this up and get it up near the, uh, the headlight there. Try to get a nice flowing bend that follows the truck. That looks pretty good to me. <clears throat> and then if you wanted to, you could uh, come in here. And if you load selection on your layer mask here, you don't even have to go back to your channels now. Because this is actually different than your channel. So if you, if you needed to make a selection area that's this exact area, uh, this is the way you do it. And so I'm going to load selection on that and then select inverse. And then if we make a new layer over the top, we can dump any color in there. Let's turn off this template. It's a little dark. And see, now you've got this grungy look to go along with it. It's not going to fill it in perfectly. So if you select inverse like that and there's some uh, gray area in here where it's not solid black and white, uh, gray area is going to be a partial selection, whereas Black is no selection, white is full selection, and any of the gray area in between is going to, to be a different opacity of selection uh, based on the value, the color value. So, uh, all right, I'm going to get rid of this black layer. Yes. And the other cool thing is, is like if, if you've got this image open right here, the guy wanted something mechanical, you throw the steampunk gears at him, and he's like, oh, uh, that's, that's too old school for me. I don't, I'm not feeling that. You can easily come back in here, grab a different image. This one's a little bit more new age. And then when I paste this on the truck, I can just literally grab this layer mask and drop it right on there, turn that layer off. And now we've got the, uh, the mech image. Whoops. And if you notice again, I, I have the, the layer mask is not locked so I can move this forward. And now if I, if I hold down the alternate key and click and drag out another copy, I can literally start placing this stuff exactly where I'd like to. 
move it forward and backwards in the layers palette to get it adjusted wherever you want and we'll just duplicate this down the vehicle stick a new layer down here let's uh, let's pick a gray like this in fact I'm gonna stick it above then we're gonna use this as our as our layer mask for this layer then we'll invert it control I to invert and now I can come in here and put a drop shadow on this stuff and make it look like it's tucked back in there so you can get some really grungy type looks with uh, using the paint splatters and whatnot uh, for this you could also create an alpha channel using like um, one of our nice day clouds that would work as well and then the the puffier spots in the clouds will allow something to show through I mean it's you could use a pattern you know whether it's uh, diamonds or whatnot to you know to manipulate like uh, the chameleon camo for instance that might have been a good one for me to use in this let's see what else we got here I guess we could throw the rust on there this a shot turn that off drop our layer mask on it in fact we could even put it back on the steampunk gears and then if you notice like my rust is covering up the I'm gonna right click this and disable the layer mask for a second so I can tile it over but if you notice my uh, rust and my steampunk gears will enable layer mask by right clicking if you notice the steampunk gears are turned on but the rust is in front of them and so if you wanted to get a really grungy look but have some rust and some steampunk gears what you can do is either relock these and move the whole thing together Whoop, excuse me need to grab them both at the same time lock them back together and then you can move these over and get your rust to, to show through in different spots instead of the gears the other option that you could do is if you leave them unchained you can just move the layer mask one at a time but you see how because they're not merged together that's not going to work in this instance if that was a single layer you could just adjust your layer mask over Photoshop will not let you move two layer masks at a time it, uh, it won't let you select just you know two layer masks so lock them back together scoot them over it'll work just like that so uh, anyways guys I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, these alpha channels like I say we'll be we'll be doing more of this in the future but the they're really 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 handy when uh, you don't have a transparent image to work with but you're trying to get the shape that you need if you like this video please like and subscribe I really appreciate you guys joining me this week uh, 6 30 2017 is the end of our 50% off sale so if you're watching this video and it's it's not uh, June 30th of 2017 yet you can go to our DVD sales site and get 50% off any DVD that we've got going there um, if you have any questions or anything like that go ahead and leave them in the comments I'll address them in future videos if there's anything I can help you with as far as uh, designs or images or there's something you're looking for you may not be able to find, please feel free to give us a call. Uh, you can find our contact information on our website. Also, I will be leaving links um, in the description below to all the images that we used here if you guys are interested in uh, purchasing and downloading any of those to play with. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next time.